What's up everyone? Welcome to video number six. As always, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for checking out the content and um, continuing to grow in your knowledge of getting your food truck on the road. So today's video is a very strategic step that the majority of people don't even truly think about. They just get out here and fly by the seat of their pants and once they actually realize what they should be doing one versus the other, they've already wasted a lot of time and possibly lost a lot of money and you know you circle back and figure out how can i you know, what am i doing wrong and this that and all that stuff well as i've mentioned the whole goal of this channel is to get you thinking about these things so you don't waste a lot of time so you don't waste a lot of money so you can get going and get going in the right direction and get the momentum that you need to truly be successful and to scale so what are those two very important decisions? And as you can see on your screen, it's should you be a mobile food truck or should you be a stationary food truck? Now, there's pros and cons to both of those. Um, I'm going to explain to you what I chose to do with my truck and why it was good for me. But like I said, I'm going to give you the information because just because it was good for me doesn't mean it's good for you. Depending on where you are in the world and where you live, I mean, you know, it's a different decision that you need to make. Where I am and where I um, operated, I chose to do what was best for my geographical place that I was. So um, I'm going to break this down so you can really truly understand the difference between the two and you can make the best decision for you and what you need to do for your brand. So we're going to start out with what it means to be stationary and all the things that come with the good and the bad of being in one place for however long you want to be there. So um, a lot of people will go to say like a church or a an auto zone or um, you know even a vacant lot that used to be a business that may have closed or it could just be you know a slab of cement or you know whatever it is. Um, I, I've known some people that'll go and pull up on those and open up shop and they'll stay there until basically until they get kicked out. That owner of that land may show up and say, "Hey, you're on my property. You need to go," or the police or whoever else. But you know, some people set up and they run for months before that happens and you can operate pretty much rent free. Now, if you went to say like an auto zone or a church or, a, you know, something like that, that's open, you know, you would have to go in and speak to whoever you have to speak to and negotiate whatever, you know, you two can um, agree on. Now, first word of advice on a negotiation or a conversation like that is you can do two things. One is you can set up a flat rate per day, per week, per month with whoever's in charge at that place and stick to that. Or you could set up a percentage of sales per day, per week, per month, and that be your agreement. I would highly, highly advise you not to fall for a short conversation where they say, I want a flat amount plus a percentage of sales. Walk away. That's, it's not that serious unless it's some place that just booms all day long and it's got a ton of foot traffic or car traffic and people pull over and you're making a nice, nice, nice amount of money. That's the only time you would ever even think about a flat and a percentage. The majority of the time, people know that your food truck is going to draw foot traffic potentially to that business. So, you know, let's figure something out that's good for both parties here. But don't fall into a situation where you are taken advantage of just because you want to get out and you want to get working and you want to get to making money. You'll end up in the negative and you will, it's, you might not make it out of that. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of setting up percentage deals because when you are in a percentage deal, everybody walks away, everybody gets paid, everybody wakes up the next day ready to get back to work and make money. When you have a flat, depending on how much that flat is and your overhead and everything like that, you might not reach that flat and it, it might be a struggle just to make rent. Well, if you're struggling just to make rent or your parking lot fee, well, then you're definitely not making any money. But in the case, like I said, this is all based off of where you are living and where you are um, setting up shop. Like I said, there are places across the country, across the world that are just tourist attractions or they just have a heavy amount of traffic. And this does not apply to that. This applies to the, the overwhelming majority of places that aren't super, super busy with thousands of people every day in and out and you know buying from food trucks so when you have a percentage deal like i said you split what actually came in you're not working from the negative trying to cover this and then once you cover that now i can start in profit and the whole thing you actually just you just split what comes in 
and everybody can wake up and move on and get back to work the next day. I'm explaining this probably a little bit more than I will anything else in this video because it's really, really important the deals that you put together on this when you're stationary because it literally affects your bottom line more than anything else. And like I said, just don't be vulnerable to um, some greedy store owner who wants to have his cake and eat it too. You know, you have options and use those options and, you know, understand your leverage, understand their leverage and try to work together on that as best you can. Now that we're past that part, let's actually compare what it's like to be stationary versus mobile as far as the day that you'll have, your, your day of operation, right? So when you're stationary, it's almost as a kind of, you know, and you get to pick your own hours that you want to be there, you know, um, that you want to be open. But the majority of the time, the people who are stationary, they're open for almost the same amount of hours as a traditional business would with the 8 to 10 to 12 hour day. And you're trying to get as many people as possible to come and eat and the whole thing like that. But um, you got to understand that in those food trucks, they're small spaces. Um, in the summertime, they're really hot. Um, you have to have, if you're going to be stationary, and this is excluding high foot traffic places. This is this is just tradition. This is just regular regular places. I'm talking about. Your marketing has to be really good because you need to drive people to you. I'm, I'm assuming that you would be in somewhat of a visible area because you want to be seen by people driving by or walking by. So if that's the case, you also will probably have other fast food restaurants in the area too that are going to be competition. So. You know, you need to consider all that um, and how much is going to actually cost you to be open like a regular restaurant would be. So what are some of those things that are heavy costs for you when you're stationary and you're open for 8 to 10 to 12 hours a day? So if you have a deep fryer on your truck or anything that uses gas, you're going to if you're open for long stretches during the day, you're going to go through a lot of propane from your propane tank. So literally to the point where depending on how much you use, you could be refilling that thing every single day, which is a headache. Trust me when I tell you, unless they come to you to refill your tank, if you have to go to them, it's a headache. Um, you're going to use a lot of propane because you can't turn the propane off. And then when you get a customer, turn it on and then heat your deep fryers up and heat your, you just can't do it because it takes too long. And you're going to have a whole lot of upset people if that's the case. So you're going to have that stuff running because you don't know when somebody's going to show up in front of your window wanting to eat. Um, you're going to your electricity, you're going to use a lot of electricity because the same thing as a, as a, as a propane tank, you're going to be up and running while you're waiting on people to come, hopefully. And you know, it's always a goal to always have a line, but that's just not the truth all the time. There's going to be some days where you don't have a bunch of people in your face all day long. You know, you may run through spurts where you're busy for an hour or two hours, and then you might be dead for three and then busy again for an hour. I mean, you know. If you've spent any time in the restaurant industry, you know how it ebbs and flows and fluctuates based off of time, based off what day it is, based off all that stuff. So, But with that being said, you still have to be open if you're going to be open. So you're going to go through gas in your generator to keep your Wi-Fi on, to keep your lights on, to keep your refrigerators on. To Unless you have um, solar panels, which some people have, but the overwhelming majority of people don't have solar panels. And even that takes some energy, but... You're going to go through gas in that, in that generator. You're going to go through propane in those propane tanks. Now, if you're in a busier place, it's almost, well, it's not almost, it is the same thing, but it could be even more hectic because if you're in a high foot traffic, high visibility, high drive-by type of place and you're busy all day long, well, once again, those deep fryers are going, those griddles are going, whatever else you have connected to the gas, it's, it's all being used. So you're going to have to think about some sort of backup if you potentially could run out you need some sort of you need something or you're gonna to have to close or you know maybe it can be refilled if there's a refiller that'll come to you and refill it you know it just i can't say this too detailed because i'm not in the area you're in and your area is completely unique to you and the other trucks that are in your area so i'm just giving general information here but you can take this general information and then make it specific to you once again, so you're using the propane all day long, you're using the, the gas and the generator all day long. So, you know, you need to have some sort of, you either need to figure out, all right, here's the amount that I can do in the amount of time. So that's the only time that I'm open because eventually that stuff's going to run out and you don't want it to run out while there's a line of people waiting to be fed and then you have to turn them away. Trust me, it's not pretty, it's not nice, and it's not the conversation you want to have. 
especially more than once. Another thing that happens when you're stationary and you're parked in one spot for an extended period of time is you get taken for granted. I mean, just think about it. Think about the restaurants that are in your area, a mile to five miles away from your house. Well, they're always open. They're always there. You know they're there. There's no, you know, maybe you're in a mood for it that day, but, you know, there's no real excitement because they're always there. They're always open. You know, as just human nature, we take stuff for granted. It's always there. Once it's gone, then we say, man, I missed that. And I really should have, you know, respected that more or not taken that for granted. But it's just what we do. So if your truck is parked for at a place for an extended period of time, you'll have hopefully you'll have regulars that come all the time. But even them. They'll take you from granted. Those people who drive by and look and they know that you're always open and you're always there. They'll say, oh, I'll, I'll come back later on or I'll, I, I I want some, but I don't have the time. I'll have some tomorrow. Now, sometimes that's good because, you know, people come and they're, they're, they're coming. But um, one good thing about being mobile is you're not there every day. You're not open all day long. So when you do come and if people really like your stuff, they're hella excited that you're there and they're going to make sure that they plan their day. Maybe not fully around you being there, but you are on their agenda for that day and they're coming to visit you that day. Now, if you're constantly changing things up and, you know, keeping it fresh and having, you know, specials and keeping people keeping people drawn to you, this is going to take a lot longer to set in than it would if you're not. But just like people get complacent, owners get complacent and that day in, day out monotony turns into that and you start to get lazy and you're not paying attention and days go by and, you know, it's just a circle of boredom. So if you're someone who is always on top of your game, who changes things up, who's always driving people to you for one way or another, then, you know, this won't be a problem for you as fast as it will be for somebody who doesn't. It may not be a problem for you at all, but, you know, I'm just telling you, you know, explaining to you human nature and what happens when you're in one place and people know that you're there and nothing's changed and they're not worried about you leaving, they tend to put you off. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about um, going to one place and staying there and operating. And once again, I'm going to keep repeating this because I just I don't want you to get lost in this. This does not um, apply to high foot traffic, high visibility areas like say you're in Times Square or you're in LA or somewhere where you just got people just walking by all day long all night you know this doesn't apply but the people who aren't in those areas it applies to now one of the good parts about being stationary is you have that address and you can constantly drive people to you you can have it in your marketing you can have it you can tell people about it you can and all your social media you know you can push 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 that address and those hours and get people to you some majority of people who are doing it right, they really only open, especially for those long days, those long hours like that on efficient days. So if it's if Monday and Tuesday are dead, then don't open, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday be open. If Sunday's dead, don't be open, you know, understand the area, understand what's going on. Be efficient about your time and your overhead, because you're, like I said, the goal here is to scale and to grow or whatever your goal is, is the goal. So, you know, make sure that you negotiate that into whatever agreement you have with the person who manages or owns that lot or that area. Tell them, hey, look, I'm only going to be open three days a week. So we need to set this price based off three days. Don't we're not going to set up a, a, a fee for seven days when I'm not open for four of them. That's how you lose. I could go on and on and on about um, the different facets to this, but I don't want to make this video too long. So the one last thing I want to say about being stationary is if for those of you who are wondering if you can do things like DoorDash, Uber Eats, whatever else the rest of them are. Yes, that's something that you can do. I know for a fact because I did it and it's 2022. I'm recording this video in summer of 2022. I was doing it back in the summer of 2018. Why? Because I have Wi-Fi on my truck. So, you know, one of those things that I was saying about the electricity, you can go to AT&T or Verizon or whoever, get a hotspot, have that hotspot on for 20, 25 hours a month, have it on in your truck. Now you have Wi-Fi for your POS for, you know, whatever you need it for your phone, you know, whatever you need it for. You have Wi-Fi for that. Once you have Wi-Fi, you can then call up DoorDash, Uber Eats, have them send you out a tablet. You can hook that tablet up to the Wi-Fi. Now you can accept DoorDash orders. Now, like I said, when I had it back in 2018, the only the real issue that I had was the address, the the location. First of all, I was a mobile truck, and I'm getting ready to start talking about mobility here in a second. But I was a mobile truck. The problem that I had was the location, the GPS on it didn't travel with me. 
So I had to go in and manually change the address to where I was every single day inside of the tablet. And some days I would forget. And I'll tell you a little story. One day I forgot and I had an order come through and it's taking the driver forever to come get this order. And then he called me and was like, I can't find your truck. You know, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And we, we couldn't figure it out. But then I go in there and I remember I didn't reset the address from the place that I was the day before. So he was a good 15 minutes away from where I was, which in DoorDash delivery time is a lot because he already has spent however long looking for my truck. Now he has to drive another 10 to 15 minutes to get to me and then, then drive back to wherever it was. I mean, it was just a, it was just a mess. And trust me, he wasn't too happy that day. And I, you know. When you're at location and you're setting up and you're doing all your prep and everything, like the last thing you're thinking about is, oh, I need to make sure that my location is, I need to get inside this tablet and start messing with the settings. Like you're busy making sure your food is on point, making sure everything else is on point, what it needs to be. The last thing you're thinking about is that tablet. So this is back in 2018. I hope now, at, you know, after working with more food trucks, that it changes and it follows you wherever you are and it changes on its own. I hope. I don't know. I haven't had the service in a while, so, you know, you guys check that out and ask the rep um, as you're setting up your account, ask them because it's important. If, they, if it doesn't, make sure that's on your checklist to do because you'll run into that problem that I did and you'll have a lot of upset drivers and possibly customers because, you know, it took so long to get the order delivered. Now let's talk about mobility. And I'm actually the biggest fan of mobility for a handful of reasons, but I'll also, you know, I'll list the pros and the cons of it. Uh, the reason why I like mobility so much is because you get to move around and you get to expose your product in a bunch of different areas in a short amount of time. So if I'm in one place one day and I'm in another place another day and another place another day after that, all those people got to experience my product in a very fast amount of time and all those people are going to go talking to their friends and their colleagues and whoever else about it and they're going to start requesting me back because they liked it so much the first time as i mentioned request me back one of the things about um, mobility is you have to be super organized about where you are and what you're doing because your calendar is going to fill up fast and your calendar fills up months in advance with requests from people can you come out this date can you come out that date? Can you come out these dates? So your calendar has to be something that you take a lot of time to understand and utilize because it could fill up depending on how good you are and how good your food is and the whole thing and your customer experience, it could fill up really, really fast. So you need to make sure I would advise having a calendar app on your phone and also a calendar at a calendar hanging up on a wall somewhere that you can write on with the dates so you don't forget because people double book and when you double book you end up with a lot of upset people because of a couple reasons one of the main reasons is when people know that you're coming to their job that day or their whatever that day they plan for you because they want to experience your truck and if you double book the person, because you're going to have to choose one, unless you have multiple trucks, you're going to have to choose one. And the person or the group or the business that you don't choose, those people didn't pack their lunch that day or they didn't eat earlier that day because they wanted to eat from you. So if you don't come, well, now they're mad because they didn't pack a lunch and they didn't eat earlier when they could have if they would have known you, you're not coming. And, and it's, it's bad. Um, you'll hear from those people and they'll, they'll review you on say Facebook or Yelp or anything like that. And they'll review you and you'll have that review sitting there because of it. Another thing is the organizer looks bad because they scheduled you, you accepted it. Now you're not coming. So not only are the people upset with you, they're also upset with the organizer, but the organizer had no control over it because they don't know your calendar. They don't know where you're supposed to be. Only you do. So I say all that to say you have to be super organized because you could become in demand really fast if your customer experience and your food is what it should be. Having your calendar organized when you're stationary is not as as of high of a, of a priority as it is when you're mobile because you're always in the same place every day. The only thing you need to remember is what days you're actually open and be there for that. So, but being mobile, it's a different beast. And like I said, they will request you months in advance and if you accept it, you need to be there and you need to perform and that's how your business is going to grow really fast and the word of mouth is going to grow really fast because people are happy with you one thing about being mobile that you can also have this when you're stationary but you're going to have it at a higher clip being mobile is you're going to have a lot of exposure to people who you wouldn't otherwise across town that may not come out to you you know if you're when you're stationary and those people with that exposure 
are going to remember you when it's time for a graduation party or a birthday party or a wedding or, you know, some sort of event that they're having. They're going to remember that they had that great food truck that day at work or that day at whatever. Let's see if we can get them to come to our whatever. And that's the best kind of money because that's the guaranteed money. That's the contract money. And you get paid whatever you and I'm going to do a video on this later about how to do these private events and this contract work. But you get paid on those if five people come to your truck or five thousand. I hope not. five. Well, if it's five thousand, you're going to make a lot of money. But you get my point. So um, but those type of opportunities come when you are exposed in a lot of different places because you're dealing with a lot of different people instead of spending a lot of money in marketing, trying to drive them to your stationary location, which you'll be able to do. It's just not at the same clip. It's just not. The clip is not even comparable unless, like I said earlier, you live in one of those high foot traffic, high visibility type of situations. If you're not that, it's not the same. So as I mentioned on the stationary side about, you know, your, your, propane running all day your gas running all day you don't have that on the mobile side because you're being scheduled and you're usually there for a two to three to four hour window so this is another reason why i chose to be mobile because i can just go crush it for two three four hours crush it close up go to another place do the same thing there or you know you call it a day after you crushed it and that's the end of your day and you can go on and do something else you know you can go spend it with your family or go do whatever you want to do you crush it for those three four hours and this you're open three to four hours, but you have more time than that because you got to prep and then you actually got to get there and you got to get up, you got to get set up. So it's still, even though you're only open for four hours, it still can be a six, seven, eight hour day, but you crush it. You don't use as much as your, as much of your utilities as you are when you're there open in the same place for 10 to 12 hours a day. You get to go on and you don't have to fill up as much. You just have to travel, spend time traveling more where that gas, where that gas that you're putting in your truck to drive, you might not be filling up your tank as much because when you're stationary you're stationary so you got a little bit of a trade-off there it's not the same gas is a little high right now well it's been high for months now but you know i like that side of it because you know i like i said you just, I, I i'm always about i'm about efficiency so if i can get in crush it be open for a handful of hours crush it close up and go that's way more efficient to me than standing around for eight to ten hours being busy in spurts and you still make the same money well, I'd rather make the same money working four hours than eight or nine. That's just me. Now, one thing you can also do is you can kind of do kind of like a hybrid model where you might be mobile two or three days and then you might be stationary two or three days, you know, and then, you know, your clothes getting your, you know, reorganizing for one day. You can do that, too. So this is there's no this is not I'm just giving you the information on both sides here with this video. I'm not saying you need to choose one or the other because you can do both. A lot of people usually do one or the other, but, you know, once again, it's completely unique to you and how you want to run your business. The goal here is just to get you the information. So once again, I am I was more of a mobile person and it helped me grow way faster than it would have with me spending a bunch of time trying to drive people to me. My my in my business plan, in my mind, I always wanted people requesting me, not me always pitching people, trying to get them to try me out. And I, you know, I'm going to put up a video on my story and show you how, you know, things happen for me the way they happen. But literally what I thought would take a year of exposure took about two weeks and then it was off and running from there. So my ultimate goal, once again, was to have people emailing me requesting me. I wanted the people asking for me that cut down a lot of time of me emailing people cold saying hey here's what i do here's what i sell here's you know you guys want to try it out about when they're emailing me they all that's done because they already heard about it and i don't have to do it and the fastest way i got that done was through mobility not being stationary so so those are the main things that you need to be thinking about when you're talking about being you know in one location versus moving around to a bunch of different um places this video is pretty long i could go into this a whole lot deeper and talk about it i'm sure i i'm sure i missed some stuff but you know um you, you get the the gist of it if you have any specific questions you can ask in the comments and um, i'll get to those but i try to keep these video videos usually at about 10 minutes but this one's you know a little bit longer than that so um i'm just gonna leave it at where it is here if you are not subscribed please subscribe and turn on notifications because uh, the next videos i'm not sure if it's the direct next one after this but coming up soon we're gonna start talking about the money the money you need to get the things that you need to get going some people may say well 
And I'll explain this in the other video. Well, you should have started with the money because I can't do any of this without the money. But I didn't because those people that you're getting money from are going to ask you about your business and maybe even ask for a business plan. And if you don't have these things that I'm talking about now figured out, then you have no business to get money for. So you need to start thinking about the strategy side before you start worrying about the money, which is why I started with what I started with and not with the money first. So but the money's coming. Share this with somebody who you think could use it. Um, like I said, if it's you and you haven't subscribed, subscribe, turn the notifications on. I would appreciate it. And we got more coming for you. So stay tuned. All right, guys.